As of recording this video, I am 24 years old and this year will be my fifth and maybe final year of studying a degree at university. Looking back over the last six years, I've learned so many things about time management and doing well at uni, but today specifically, I wanted to talk about the six main things that I wish I knew before I started preparing for my physiotherapy university degree. Having a good grasp of anatomy and physiology is vital, as I've said before in previous videos, for any physiotherapist. But many students, including myself, revise anatomy and physiology in very inefficient ways. The mistake I made was I spent a disgusting amount of time reading anatomy and physiology books. And since I've read those books, I've forgotten about 80 to 90% of what I read. From my experience, anatomy and physiology books are written in a way that is kind of boring and a lot of the information in anatomy and physiology books are way more detailed than what you will need to know as a physiotherapist. Also, while, as you guys might know, using uh, <clears throat> active recall, like, the, like in the form of, of flashcards, is one of the best ways to learn. And despite that being the case, because there's so much information to learn, about anatomy and physiology in general, but also specifically as a physiotherapist, you haven't got time to make flashcards about all of anatomy and physiology. Trust me, I've tried. Even if somehow you, you, you manage to do some monumental task on making flashcards for all of anatomy and physiology, by the time you've, you've finished the anatomy and physiology book you've been reading to make these flashcards, will either not include all the content about anatomy and physiology, or they will now have released the 12th edition of that book, and now you've got to make another thousand flashcards for all, to include all the extra information that that, um, that that book has included. Ultimately, research about anatomy and physiology is progressing faster than you as an individual can make flashcards about it. This is just how science and innovation is, is progressing. While active recall and spatial repetition, according to the scientific literature, is one of the best ways to learn, it's not realistic to, do so for realistic to do this for anatomy and physiology. Yes, if you've got a specific exam coming up and you know exactly, your, you know, you know pretty much the main parts of anatomy and physiology that, that will come up in the exam, that's different. But if you're learning about anatomy and physiology in general for a degree, it's way too broad to be making flashcards because you don't know what bits are relevant and what aren't. You will only know what bits are relevant and what aren't when you've had clinical experience and you've actually been to the lectures on your physiotherapy course. Therefore, my advice to anyone starting on a physio degree is to look at subscriptions for anatomy and physiology or clinical uh, physiotherapy resources. So two that come to mind, so there's one for anatomy and physiology known as osmosis, and there's one for physiotherapy called clinical physio. Yes, these subscriptions do cost money, but they are so worth it. They make the content much more engaging and they cut out all the fluff and only tell you the things you need to know, especially clinical physio. The only way I would suggest for these resources to be better is to include more active recall and more flashcards and questions into um, and building them in into their platform because that's going to um, help facilitate learning a lot better. But regardless, e even, e even though these platforms are quite expensive because you've got to pay a monthly or yearly subscription, they are so worth it. And no matter what way you look at it, anatomy and physiology books are expensive anyway. So you might as well spend your money on resources you're actually going to use and information that's going to be relevant to physiotherapy. Organization is key to success with any degree. And one of the main things that I changed between my undergraduate degree and my postgraduate degree was my level of organization. In my bachelor's degree, I would make notes from the lectures on a Word document, and then I would shove all that in a folder never to see it again. That was until I started using an app called Notion, which changed my life. While I use Notion for my personal life as well, I use it to plan my assignments, to make lecture notes, to make to-do lists, literally anything you can think of in relation to university. You don't have to use Notion specifically, there's loads of personal knowledge management applications you can use, but I like Notion because it's very versatile, it's fairly easy to use, and it's free for students. But again, even if you don't want to use Notion, using an app like that to, for, to support you will transform 
um, how you work when doing your degree. While I appreciate this may be boring for many people, if you're doing a bachelor's of science or a master's of science, which is what physiotherapy usually is, you need to understand the scientific method and how to interpret scientific academic li literature. Assuming you want to get a good grade and maybe even want to do research in the future, A-levels and B-techs do not set you up for academia. I was one of those crazy students that did a triple B-tech as well as two A-levels. And while I would make the argument that A-level history for me did include some level of critical thinking, all of the other subjects did not. With my B-tech in PE, it was literally just like, okay, here's a chapter in a book. Can you paraphrase it? Okay, yeah, well done. With A-level biology, it was, okay, here's a fact. Here's many different facts. Can you regurgitate that information in an exam? This does not set you up for doing a degree. If you want to do well on your bachelor's or master's degree in physiotherapy, you need to understand the science, assuming you want to do well. And I know this might sound obvious to some of you, but no one told me this going into my degree. No one told me about the ways of critical thinking, effective writing, and how to interpret scientific papers. Some universities are really proactive at teaching you this, but some aren't. So don't rely on them to teach you this. Be proactive and teach yourself these things. On my channel, I've made a video uh, uh, about critical writing and effective writing at university. And the video title is about like, it's like how to get 70% plus on all your essays. Feel free to check that out because I think that's a really useful video. Also, I will link books down below about how to interpret um, statistics in medicine and healthcare, which should be useful as well. If you do the things I've suggested here, and you also make a habit of trying to read scientific papers, then you'll be off to an amazing start with your degree. A very underrated thing to do before your clinical degree is trying to get some clinical experience, even if it's just shadowing experience. While this was extremely difficult for me before my degree because of the COVID pandemic, it should be easier for you now watching this video. Ultimately, when you're doing your degree, many universities across the country are struggling to provide students with placement opportunities. And so there's no guarantee you're going to get a placement in the area that you want to work in. And so as you can imagine, that, set, that gives you a huge disadvantage when finding a finding your chosen job after your degree so if there's an area you really want to experience before starting your degree be proactive and try and get experience in that area email as many people trusts hospitals clinics until someone eventually gets back to you Having that experience early on will be so important for the start of your degree. When going to university, you are paying thousands and thousands of pounds to be there. So my mindset is that you want to be as proactive as possible and squeeze as much value out of your degree as, as you can. I'm going to try and find the lecturers who are the most knowledgeable or are the most knowledgeable in the areas I'm interested in. And I'm gonna ask them questions. I'm gonna see if there's any research projects I can do. I'm gonna see if there's any volunteering I can do to help develop skills in certain areas. You know, it's, it's thinking outside the box and not just showing up to the lectures hungover. You know, it's doing whatever you can to upskill yourself because if you don't do anything like I've just described, you're not going to stand out. And so that means when you are gonna be competing with your peers for the same jobs after you graduate, there's gonna be nothing to distinguish between you and them. In my degree, for example, I went a step further and didn't just find an opportunity, I created an opportunity. I've built up a rapport with the staff on my degree and I suggested and helped set up an academic placement for physiotherapy students, which is, I believe, is the first academic placement that my university has ever, has ever done before, whereby I'm essentially a lecturing assistant who helps out teaching and delivering the content for the first years. On the back of this, I'm currently doing a research project, which hopefully might even be published in a peer-reviewed paper, or at least that's the aim. Therefore, I will walk away from this placement with potentially a huge advantage when applying for other jobs. And none of this would have been possible if I didn't suggest doing this placement to the head of, to the head of my course. Be proactive, be a go-getter, and eventually you will reap the rewards. Lastly, on your degree, you want to make life easier for yourself. You know, you want to be mindful of the effort you're putting into, into your degree. Degrees are marathons, they're not sprints. If, you're, if you have bad time management and you're just rushing from degree to group, from, from, sorry, from assignment to assignment to finish them all last minute, 
eventually you will burn out. If you don't make any time for spending time with friends and family and doing hobbies, then you will burn out. And this happened to me and it's, it, it, it's not nice. It takes months to get back to how you used to feel. Your emotions change, your ability to sleep is altered, your stress levels change, you, you know, just your motivation to work changes. It's just not a nice feeling. Whenever I start to get this feeling in life, I think to myself, A, I've ever taken on too many, too, too many responsibilities, or B, I need to become better at managing my time and having healthy habits. In general though, there's so many things you can do before your degree and whilst doing your degree to make things less stressful. Firstly, please learn how to cook. The better you get at cooking, the more you can make healthy food taste nice, the more you eat healthy food, the better you, you feel, and the more money you save not buying takeout. Learn time management. Time management is a big thing, but in general, time management is being in touch with your calendar. Being aware of the deadlines for your assignments and, the other, and other responsibilities, and knowing how long you have until those deadlines. Knowing how long something will take you, knowing what areas you need to prioritize to fulfill the roles and responsibilities you have. This could also be you know, being more efficient, for example, learning how to type faster. For example, relating to what I was saying before, making anatomy, making flashcards on all of anatomy and physiology is not a good way to show good time management. Another thing you can do is to try and get your uni, accommodation, gym and food shop or wherever, wherever you exercise or do team sports, try and get all of them in a somewhat close area. This will save you time traveling from place to place, which will add up over time. And it's, it'll make things easier when trying to be healthy. Lastly, but not least, I've kind of touched on this already, but be proactive with your mental health and physical health. Put yourself first, don't cut corners and your, bum, and your mind and body will thank you for it. In short, University degrees and specifically physio degrees as well can be tough at times and you want to do whatever you can to make life easier for yourself. If you've liked this video then feel free to watch the video here where I talk about how to get 70% or more on your university assignments and essays. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there. Adios amigos.